Well, very busy times, folks, on Capitol Hill, and we're also watching closely things in the legislature. The legislature will be coming back to Jefferson City in January. I'm Brian Hillsworth, and joining us is Missouri Senator Josh Hawley for a few minutes. We always appreciate his time. Senator, I want to start with the stimulus. I know you've talked about it extensively, and you've insisted that the stimulus continue to contain um, direct payments, if you will, cash payments or check payments probably being the better term. To Americans, what's the status of the negotiations right now? What do you hear? Well, today I introduced a bill that would provide $1,200 in support for every Missouri worker who needs it, $2,400 for couples, and $500 for every kid in the household. This is exactly what Congress did back in March, Brian, and it was a lifeline to Missouri families, working families in need. We ought to do that again. Frankly, that's the bare minimum that we ought to do, and we ought to make sure that working families in our state and around the country are first for COVID relief and not last. Senator, what, what, uh, what, do you, what, do you, what would you tell or what have you told the president if a package goes to his desk that does not include these, uh, these checks? Well, I've talked to the president multiple times about this over the last week, and I've urged him to veto any relief package that does not include direct assistance to families and individuals. I don't know why, Brian, the Senate would want to spend hundreds of billions of dollars in money for big government and for big business, but would give nothing to families and working individuals. I mean, that's just insane, which is what I've said to the president. And, you know, he agrees with that. He has supported and is supporting now direct assistance. He has said publicly that he is in favor of direct assistance. It was, a, it was the cornerstone of what Congress did back in March, and it ought to be the, the cornerstone of any relief package now. Senator, just a few minutes left. We appreciate your time. I know my colleague Ashley Bird asked you last week about the Armstrong Teasdale report about the veterans' homes. We've had just in that past week a few more deaths at the veterans' home in St. Louis from COVID. Any thoughts on that? And have you had a chance to talk to the governor, uh, Mike Parson, about that Armstrong Teasdale report? And we have our teams have been in contact, and I, I've read the report. And uh, I'll just say again that uh, listen, this report is not good. I'm glad the governor ordered it. It was the right move to do it. It was the right move to get that information out there. It's the right move to make it public. Uh, but there's a lot of work here to be done. And I've got great confidence, confidence in Governor Parson. I know that he'll hold accountable the people who need to be held accountable. But uh, this is a situation where there's just no room here for compromise. You've got to say that our veterans deserve the best care, not the worst. They deserve the best. And uh, I don't doubt the goodwill of everybody in the system and the veteran system who's trying to provide it to them. But uh, we've really got to hold the line here and say that based on these reports, findings, changes have to be made. And again, I think the governor has been very strong on this. He was right to go out there immediately and say, we need a full accounting. We need to make that accounting public. And now I, I, I have confidence in him to take the necessary steps to make these changes. One final question, that is duck boat. I try to ask you as much as I can about it because it's such a big issue. There was a development earlier this month, Senator Duckworth, Senator Blunt, and you, Tom Cotton, worked on that bill. Where is that bill? What's the status of that? Well, I'm happy to report, Brian, that as soon as we're done talking here, I'm going to the floor of the Senate, and I'm going to go and try to pass that bill on the floor. I'm going to, it's passed unanimously out of committee after much pressure and arm twisting, I might say, but it has passed unanimously out of committee. I'm going to bring it up on the floor right now, and I'm going to ask for unanimous consent to have it adopted by the United States Senate. Are you confident? Uh, I, I don't know why anybody would oppose it, especially after a unanimous vote in committee, but uh, we'll see. But we're going to go find out right now.